In your lifetime, you could walk across continents, sail oceans, orbit the Earth, even reach Mars. But if you pushed the limits of physics itself, time would bend and you could cross the galaxy before you died. But back on Earth, tens of thousands of years would pass. So, how far can a single lifetime really take you? Sixty thousand years ago, the first modern humans set out from East Africa. They didn't know it, but they were beginning a journey that would populate the entire planet. And in a single lifetime, a determined person could walk thousands of miles. Take George Megan. From 1977 to 1983, he walked the entire length of the Americas, 19,000 miles from Tierra del Fuego to Alaska, the longest unbroken walk in recorded history. Now imagine walking every day of your life. You could cover about 110,000 miles. That's more than four times around the Earth. For the earliest humans, walking was enough to reshape the world. Then came animals that multiplied human range. A horse could take you 10 times farther in a day than your own legs. Camels turned deserts from barriers into highways. On the Silk Road, merchants spent their lives covering thousands of miles between China, India, Persia, and Rome. One life could now connect entire civilizations. Genghis Khan's mounted couriers? With fresh horses, they could ride 200 miles in a single day. A message could cross Eurasia in weeks instead of years. Meanwhile, across the Pacific, Polynesian navigators voyaged thousands of miles across open ocean. In a single lifetime, one could cross nearly the entire Pacific Basin. The world was becoming smaller, and one life could stretch across continents. By the 1400s, ships changed everything. Zheng He's treasure fleet in China covered more than 30,000 miles across the Indian Ocean. Then, Ferdinand Magellan's expedition circumnavigated the globe. A single human life could truly span the entire planet. In just a few decades, the scale of human travel exploded. A person born in 1500 might live to see the Earth connected by sea. A lifetime's reach had gone from thousands of miles to the entire world. The 19th century brought machines. Railroads turned journeys of months into journeys of days. A person could now cross continents in their lifetime, not just once, but dozens of times. Then came the airplane. The Wright brothers' fragile flyer in 1903 could only cover 120 feet. But by the 1930s, Amelia Earhart was crossing oceans in hours. By the 1960s, the Concorde was flying passengers across the Atlantic in under three hours. A lifetime now could cover millions of miles. The Earth itself began to feel small. I believe that this nation should commit itself Mission. to achieving the goal Lift off before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And then, humanity left Earth. In 1969, Apollo astronauts traveled 240,000 miles to the moon. Apollo 10 reached nearly 40,000 kilometers per hour, the fastest humans have ever traveled. Today, astronauts aboard the International Space Station orbit Earth 16 times a day over a career that adds up to hundreds of millions of miles. Within your lifetime today, you could realistically travel to Mars. It would take about six to nine months one way. A round trip would add hundreds of millions more miles to your life's total. But compared to the stars, even that is almost nothing. Here's where physics puts down the law. Nothing made of matter can reach the speed of light. Maximum warp, punch it. Why? Because as you go faster, your mass effectively increases. To push a speck of matter to light speed would require infinite energy. 
Just overloading. With more power. At 99.9% .9 of light speed, you'd need the energy of entire nations. At 99.9999%, the energy of stars. And matter itself starts to break down under the strain. Time itself changes. The faster you go, the slower your time passes compared to people standing still. This isn't theory. We see it. Cosmic rays called muons live longer when moving near light speed, enough to reach Earth's surface. GPS satellites tick slightly differently from clocks on Earth, corrected every day for relativity. So how far can you go in a lifetime if your time is the only clock that matters? In just 10 years of your time, you could reach the nearest stars, places like Alpha Centauri, four light years away. But back on Earth, far more than 10 years would pass, decades, maybe even centuries. To you, it's a single lifetime. To the rest of humanity, it's an eternity. Push harder. 80 years at 99.9999999% the speed of light. In your lifetime, you could cross the Milky Way itself, a journey of 100,000 light years. But when you look back, 100,000 years will have passed on Earth. Civilizations will have risen and fallen. Humanity itself may be gone. Yes, you traveled farther than anyone ever dreamed, but you also outlived the world you left behind. So, how far can you travel in a single lifetime? On foot, tens of thousands of miles. On ships and planes, millions. On rockets, hundreds of millions. At relativistic speed, the entire galaxy. But in the end, distance isn't just measured in miles. It's measured in what you carry with you. The people you meet, the cultures you encounter, the time you leave behind. Maybe the greatest journey of a lifetime isn't how far you go, but how deeply you experience the world along the way.